how to build uh, change data capture uh, into Kafka and do some processing on that and then do some delivery into other things. So this is pure integration play. We start off by doing uh, change data capture from SQL, uh, in this case MySQL, and uh, build an initial application and then configure how you get data from the source. So we configure the information to connect into MySQL. When you do this, we'll check and make sure everything is going to work, that you already have change data capture configured properly. And if it wasn't, we'll tell you how to fix it and how to do it. You then select the tables that you're interested in. Uh, we're going to collect the change data from. And this is going to create a data stream. That data stream, we're then going to deliver into Kafka. So we're going to configure how we want to write into Kafka. Um, and that's basically setting up what the uh, broker configuration is, what the topic is, and how we want to format the data. In this case, we're going to write it out as JSON. When we save this, this is going to create a data flow. And the data flow is very simple in this case. It's two components. We're going from a MySQL CDC source into uh, Kafka Writer. We can uh, test this by deploying the application. And it's a two-stage process. You deploy it first, um, which will put all the components out over the cluster, and then you run it. And now we can see the data that's flowing in between. So if I uh, click on this I, you can actually see the real-time data. And you see there's a data and there's a before. That's basically for updates, you get the before image as well, so you can see what's actually changed. So this is real-time data flowing through um, um, a MySQL application. The raw data may not be that useful. And one of the pieces of data in here is um, a product ID. Uh, and that you know, product ID doesn't contain enough information. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to extract the various fields from, from this. And those various fields include the location ID, product ID, how much stock there is, et cetera. This is an inventory monitoring table. And we just turn that from kind of a, a raw array format into a set of name fields that will make it easier to work with later on. You can see the structure is very different now, what we're actually seeing uh, in that data stream. If we then uh, want to add additional uh, context to this, what we'll be able to do is join that data with something else. So first of all, we'll just configure this so that uh, instead of writing the raw data out to Kafka, we'll write that process data out. And you can see all we have to do is change the input stream. So that will change the data flow now to write that uh, process data out into Kafka. But now we're going to add a, a cache. And this is a distributed in-memory data grid that's going to contain additional information that we want to join with our raw data. And so this is product information. So for every product ID, there's a description and price and some other stuff. So first of all, we'll just create a, a data type that corresponds to our database table and configure what the key is. And the key in this case is the product ID. Then we specify how we're going to get the data. And it could be from files. It could be from HDFS. We're going to use a database reader to load it from a MySQL table. So we specify all the connections and the query we're going to use. And we now have a cache of product information. To use this, we modify our SQL to just join in the cache. So anyone that's ever written any SQL before knows what a join looks like. We're just joining uh, on the product ID. So now, instead of just the raw data, we now have these additional fields that we're pulling in in real time from the product information. So if we start this and look at the data again, you will actually be able to see the additional fields like description um, and uh, brand and category and price that came from that uh, other table. And that's all joined in memory. There's no database lookups going on. It's actually really, really fast. If you already have data on Kafka or another message bus or anywhere else for that matter, even in files, um, you may want to kind of read it and push it out to some other targets. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that data that we just wrote to Kafka. We're going to use a Kafka uh, reader in this case. So we'll just search for that and, and drag in the Kafka source. And then we configure that 
with the uh, properties to connect to the broker that we just used. And so the uh, and because we know it's JSON data, we're going to use a JSON parser that's going to break it up into a, a JSON object structure and then create this data stream. When we uh, deploy this and uh, start this application, it'll start reading from that Kafka uh, topic. And we can look at that data and we can see uh, this is the data that we were writing out previously with all the information in it, and it's a JSON format. You can see the, the JSON structure there. For the other targets that we're going to write to, uh, the JSON structure may not work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a query that's going to pull uh, the various fields out of that JSON structure and create a, a well-defined uh, data stream that has various um, individual fields in it. So we'll uh, write a query to do that. That's directly accessing the JSON data and uh, save that. And now, instead of that original data stream that we had with the JSON in it, when we uh, deploy this and uh, start it up and look at the data, and this is incidentally how you build applications, looking at the data all the time um, as you're building and adding additional components into it. Um, if we uh, look at the data stream now, then you'd be able to see that uh, we have those individual fields, which is what we had before on the other side of Kafka. But don't forget that um, it may not be stream writing to Kafka, it could be anything else. And if it, you were doing something like we just did with CDC into Kafka, then Kafka into uh, additional targets, you don't have to have Kafka in between. Um, you, you can just like take the CDC and push it out to the targets directly. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a simple target, which is going to write to a file. And uh, we do this by choosing the file adapter, the, the file writer, and specifying the format we want. So we're going to write this out in the CSV format. Um, we actually call it DSV because it's delimiter separated, um, and the delimiter can be anything. It doesn't have to be a comma. And save that. And now we have uh, something that's going to write out to the file. So if we deploy this and start this up, then uh, we'll be creating a file with the real-time data. And um, it'll, you know, after a while, it's got some data in it, and then we can use something like uh, Microsoft Excel to actually view the data um, and check that it's kind of what we wanted. So let's take a look in Excel. And here you can see uh, the data that we initially collected from uh, MySQL being written to Kafka, being collected from Kafka, and then being written back out into this CSV file. Then just have one target in a single data flow. Uh, you can add multiple targets if you want. We're going to add in writing into Hadoop and into Azure Blob Storage. So what we do is uh, in the case of Hadoop, we don't want all the data to go to Hadoop. So we'll add in a simple CQ to restrict the data and do this by location ID. So only location 10 is going to be written to Hadoop. Uh, that's so some filtering going on there. And now we will uh, add in the Hadoop target. Uh, so we're going to write to HDFS as a target, uh, drag that into the data flow, and see there's many ways of working with the platform. We also have a scripting language, by the way, that enables you to do all of this from VI or Emacs or whatever your favorite text editor is. Um, and we're going to write to HDFS in Avro format. So we'll specify the schema file, and then when this is started up, we'll be writing into HDFS as well as to this local file system. And similarly, if we want to write into Azure Blob Storage, we can take the adapter for that and just search for that and drag that in from the targets. And we're going to do that on the original source data, not that query. So we'll drag it into uh, that original data stream. And now we just configure this with information from uh, Azure. So you need to find out you know, uh, what is the uh, server uh, URL, what is, uh, and you should know what your key is and the username and password and uh, things like that. You're going to uh, collect that information uh, if you don't have it already, and then add that into the 
uh, target definition for Azure Blob Storage, and we'll write that out in JSON format. So that's kind of very quickly how you can do data integration, real-time streaming data integration uh, with our platform. And all of that data was streaming. It was being created by doing changes to MySQL. Uh, 